Hello and welcome to Cash Chats, the podcast from Be Clever With Your Cash that helps you make the most of your money. I'm Amelia Murray. And I'm Andy Webb. Some of the stories we'll be looking at in your money this week include whether an unlimited flight pass is too good to be true, what the latest inflation rate change means for your base rate, plenty more than that. Plus, we also have deals the week, which includes a £100 saving bonus and an Amazon co-op bundle that is well worth a look. All of that in episode 409 of Cash Chats. So Andy, what has been happening in your world of money? Oh, so we've we've talked quite a lot on the here when there's like price increases, haven't we? And it was a spell where things was going up, up and up. And we'll, we'll come back to inflation in a minute. But um, my wife went to the dentist last week and the price hike from when I went last month was astronomical. It's it's really shocking. So first of all, I say like it's obviously not an NHS dentist when we moved here we tried to even get on a waiting list let alone be on a waiting list and, and wait to be a nhs patient we couldn't even get on a waiting list to be an nhs patient so that's obviously a topic for another time i think so we haven't supposed to pay privately and it's been going up you know year after year as things do but when i went in august and this in itself is like i think extortionate 85 pounds just for a normal checkup 85 quid when becky went last week 120 pounds wow I mean, that's a 40% increase. Like that's mm. on top of other increases year on year. I mean, they say, oh, when Becky said about it, she said, oh, you know, cost of living crisis, isn't it? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, just like, yes, things get more expensive, but I couldn't believe that. I mean, that is, I think, one of the most shocking price increases that, that I've encountered. I mean, okay, we only go once, maybe twice a year, um, but it's just a checkup. I mean, what's it going to be if we actually need any work done? And what's it like for everyone else who can't get on an NHS waiting list? I mean, yeah absolutely shocking i mean it's the kind of thing if you guys have uh, let us know what, how expensive your dentists are as well because if this is a bigger thing it might be something for us to to uh rise about more but but sadly that i guess the tip to get around this is go to an nhs dentist and sadly you can't in lots of cases it's a real postcode lottery because i had a similar thing in march um there were lots of headlines at the time i remember about waiting lists and not being able to to get the nhs um dentist treatment and i went around well i got in touch with all of the dentists in my area N- no they weren't taking on any nhs patients and then i found one was so quick seemed like the doors were open so it was the complete opposite they had an appointment there and then for me i had a little cheeky like hygienist thing as well like in the same hour and i was like oh my god like this is, yeah, the complete other side to the coin. And it just makes you think, yeah, how is all of this being allocated in terms of the funding? Um, and yeah, the kind of the waiting list for the for the NHS patients. So yeah, it's a weird one. What about you? What's your uh, money week been like? So I'm off on holiday. Um, at the time of recording, I'm going tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, I... It's an interesting one for me. So in my real life, my non-holiday life, I'm good with money I'm sensible I kind of don't go on these splurges and when I go on holiday I want to relax a bit I mean I'm not kind of checking into five-star hotels with you know champagne jacuzzis or or whatever like I'm not crazy but I just like to relax and if I want to kind of treat myself I will because I work hard and I've budgeted for it but I'm going away with my mom and sister and my mom I want to say like it's not like she's obsessed with value. She's <laughs> obsessed with paying as little as she can. So when you're on holiday with someone who has, I guess, a different attitude to money compared to you, it kind of creates a bit of a, a tension and a bit of a dynamic. So last time I went away with my mum, we found a deal in Gran Canaria where you could get three courses for, I think it was about 10 euros. And since then, that's become my mum's benchmark. So we're going to <laughs> Spain and she's like, right, that's what we have to aim for. And you know what it's like? I don't want to have to go bargain hunting every night or for every meal. Um, but that, you know, she's the mum and she's still the matriarch, even though I'm a grown up. So, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, the, the holiday money chat, I think, is quite interesting. Um, and I will let you know how it goes. <laughs> Should I'm we back. send her this episode so she can listen to it on the plane? And that can be the kind of, that's just the way into it. So, oh, didn't realise. And then it's all she sorted. She won't care. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, whatever, deal with it. <laughs> well, we're going to come back to some holiday chat later on, aren't we? But the first story I want to talk about um, from the things that happened this week was the latest inflation rate, which happened on Wednesday, and it increased from 2% to 2.2%. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, no, 
I thought we've just got it down. I thought inflation was falling. That was the main thing rather than it going back up again. And you might be sort of worried that that, what that means for you. Does it mean we're going to start seeing prices increase at a faster rate? Again, of course, if the inflation rate is positive above zero, then prices are still going up. But obviously, 2 and 2.2% is way off those kind of when we were in double figures just you know, nearly a year, two years ago. Um, but what's the, I guess with this one is, yes, it's gone up, but it shouldn't be something to worry about particularly. In part because the reason it's gone up is because of changes to energy prices a year and a month ago kind of skewed down that inflation figure. So this time, other things, yes, some things have gone up by more than last month and other things have gone down, but it's not too bad. It's nothing to be particularly worried about. Uh, and secondly, this isn't going to be a continuous upward trend significantly, at least anyway. The Bank of England have been saying for a long time now that they expected when it hit 2% this summer, and it did, they expected it to go up to about 2.5% by the end of the year, and then maybe sort of over the next few years come down to around sort of 1.5%. So is that 2% give or take half a percent? So again, these kind of things are expected. So again, nothing to worry about is still hopefully part of the plan. Um, but what's interesting is they actually thought the inflation rate would go up by a little bit more. We're not talking massive amounts, but they actually thought it might be 2.3% rather than 2.2%. And that is where, I guess, the, the more interesting thing comes with the result of this. Um, some markets and economists are now predicting that rather than just seeing one more cut to the base rate this year, we might see two. And we might even see one as soon as next month. So uh, we'll obviously keep you updated here on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, and on BeCleverYourCash.com whenever that next, uh, well, we know when it's going to be, in the middle of September, the next base rate meeting from the Bank of England, when it is, what they do. But yeah, so there might be some more changes there. Um, the only other thing to say around this inflation increase is that this could potentially indicate the uh, rail price increase next March. That's how far in advance uh, they start thinking about what the price increases might be. That's because normally, but not always, uh, it is the July rate of inflation that is used to uh, kind of uh, be that benchmark for, for train ticket price changes. Um, that's based on RPI rather than CPI. I won't get into that now, but not many people use RP anymore and it is RPI anymore, but it's slightly higher at 3.6, but that's not nailed on. That could change. But broadly speaking, we might see 3.6% increases in trains next year. But yeah, that's it. So nothing too much to worry about with inflation and, and we'll keep you informed what happens with the base rate. Great. I think the next meeting is actually on my birthday next month. Well, what a treat. Oh, yeah. For you. Could, be, could be a real a real event um so yeah that will be next month in september which is when the students of this year this academic year will be starting university which brings us on to my story um so we did some research around students and finance specifically looking uh, about into how they use their overdraft and other types of debt um and we yeah, what we found was quite startling so we know that student accounts, one of the benefits is the 0% overdraft. Um, it's a lot more generous than other types of current account. Um, and that's what they're good for. But what this research is suggesting that most students use their overdraft at some point. So 59% do actually dip into it while they're at university. But perhaps what we weren't aware of was how quickly they reach their limit. So more than one in three max out their overdraft in the first year. So when we look at this, you know, I want to kind of challenge the headlines around young people and, you know, frivolous spending and dipping into the overdraft to pay for festivals or, for, you know, shopping or, um, I know, parties or whatever. I think there is, you know, we need to kind of look at this in quite a sympathetic light. I think a lot of students, despite the fact that they have a student loan or they have some sort of finance, they might have a job through university, they, you know, their parents or other family members might be helping them. It is still very expensive just living so kind of paying for everything um and this data is suggesting that yeah it's about people just trying to get by and relying on the overdraft um and then once they've maxed out the overdraft the issue is they might move on to other forms of credit so our research suggested that 37 percent of students have a credit card 26 percent have personal loans 24%, so almost a quarter, use buy now, pay later. And what we know from other kind of data sources is with buy now, pay later, it's often for non-essential spend. So this is, you know, you see it on retailers' websites everywhere. You see it when people go to buy festival tickets. It's often for, yeah, fashion or clothes. Um, and 
it would suggest that people may not have that money at the time that they're making that purchase. Um, and really worryingly, more than one in 10, so 12% have payday loans at university. Now they are really uh, something to try and avoid because they're really expensive. You can get caught up in the, the debt cycle where you're having to take out another loan to, to pay off another. So yeah, that's really concerning for people, you know, living on their own for the first time trying to be independent and and getting into that kind of debt. Um, but yeah, but we, going back to the 0% overdraft, you know, we have done some work on this. We've got an updated student account article with all the best accounts, and we've done some more in-depth reviews over on the website. Yeah, and I've actually, you've, you've just published the video as well, just the weekend, looking at those same accounts as well. So however it is you want to, if you're going to university this uh, autumn or your kid is going, make sure you do check out uh, either the articles or the video to help you pick the right one for you. But absolutely, you know, don't get uh, distracted by the freebies. It's nice as that free cash sounds and you can get the free cash as well, but it's going for that overdraft uh, is going to be one of the most important things because, you know, some of them are larger than others. And if people, as you, you know, the research show people are maxing them out quite early there's a need for more of it and at least it's free if you have to borrow it's better to borrow it free at zero percent than, than any other way um got a trio of kind of travel related stories now and the first one i want to touch on not not too much on it but quite quickly on this one is a new unlimited subscription from Wiz air which for 534 pounds roughly that's the you buy it in euro so that whatever depending on the exchange rate i guess in the day but roughly 530 quid you get unlimited travel on Wizz Air. Now, that sounds pretty good, right? And I think there was a lot of excitement about this when it was launched a couple of days ago. Uh, until Thursday night, there was about £80 off that headline price. Um, but I thought, rather than celebrate this, we should probably should point out some of the catches. If you were thinking about it, just making sure you're aware that in lots of ways, it probably is too good to be true. First of all, that unlimited price of travel doesn't include everything. You've still got to spend 10 euros on each ticket every time you want to fly, each way. You can only book seats uh, in the next three days, which unless you're going for like a city break, realistically, you're not going to be able to get your return flight uh, when you buy your outward flight. So that could be a real problem. You might find you get where you're going just for an extra 10 euros, but there's no flight availability coming back because the flight sold out it's sold out so that's going to be a problem and if you want to take any bags that could be a problem because only a small personal item is included if you want to have a carry-on bag or a bag in the hold you've got to pay extra on top of that so uh it's certainly something that for you know for most people i think this is not going to be a good option i suppose if you are you've got a lot of flexibility and you don't have to you can go somewhere and you don't have to come back straight away uh, then maybe it might be worth a look. Um, the other thing in this one as well is that there's only a certain number of these passes available full stop, and they're also segmented down from different airports. So you might find that your local airport is already sold out when you come to look at it. Uh, but yeah, it's Wizz Air. Have a look at it. And I think actually we've got another story we'll probably touch on next week as well involving uh, Wizz Air, uh, which we will keep you updated on. Oh my God. I mean, what's the point? 538 euros. And it's also the... Isn't it the most delayed airline? Or I think Wit said it was the worst for customer service as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I like the concept of it. You know, we've talked about these different subscriptions in the past in different ways. And if you use them right, sometimes they can get you some great value. But most of the time, you know, things like this, as much as you want, you know, you talked about buffets the other week. We've talked about the Pretz, one that's changing. We've talked about all these streaming services. Uh, most of the time, the reason they've got them is because, you know, people end up not using them or as much as they should or they end up letting them auto renew all the time so really you know they're, they're not in our favor most of the time they mainly to make money for the brands yeah be careful with that one um next travel story so this is about uh theft on the beach and this is a matter close to my heart because i go to the beach a lot and i worry constantly about my stuff <laughs> so <laughs> this is some data from churchill the insurance company and according to Churchill, 2.7 million people lost 438 million pounds of items on beaches last year. Um, and 1.4 million people said they leave items unattended on the beach and out of sight, which isn't 
sensible. Um, they've broken it down and they're saying people between the ages of 18 and 34 are the least security conscious, um, which would be me. I still fit into that age bracket. Um, but it is a tricky one because when I go to the beach, I have my things. I'm always worried about it. I go for a swim. I'm always looking at my stuff. I'm like, mm, there's an old lady near my stuff. Can I trust her? Can I trust the people around? You know, it's almost like that crowd, the crowd thing where it's like, well, if there's enough people, no one's going to even try it. Um, but what my boyfriend and I have is when we go to the beach in the, like if we go before work, like when no one's around, we have these little inflatable bags. So you wear them also like a kind of buoyancy aid, but you can put so much stuff in there. You could put your trainers in there. You can put oh, your wow. valuables, your phone and you swim with it. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great device, but the other things that people have been doing, wrapping valuables in clothes or towels. So almost half of people say they do that. Uh, they use secret hiding places like sun cream bottles. 15% say they do that. Wow. And then this one, I did see this last year, wrapping valuables in a nappy. Oh. So 12% of people say they do that. And this was a bit of like a hack on social media last year. So it's a clean nappy, but yeah. you're wrapping, I guess, I don't know, jewelry or your phone, wrapping it up tight. And then I guess putting it in your bag. And the idea is that no one's going to want to pick out a wrapped up nappy from your bag yeah but you could also I guess like ask people so this happened to me the other week um I must have a really trustworthy face because two blokes were just about to go in the sea and I was just packing up it was a bit weird it's like I was clearly about to leave and they're like oh um do you mind just watching our stuff for like two minutes and I was like yeah of course and it was a lot longer than two minutes but I let them have it because I like being trusted with other people's things. And while they were in the sea, you accessed all their banking apps and transferred all their savings across to uh, your own accounts. So Yeah, I took the nappy then. out of their bag and I knew what they were doing. <laughs> but this is it is really interesting, is it? Because I, when you say wrap it up in clothing or a towel, I'm like, I mean, that's what most people I think probably would do because, you, you know, you don't just leave your phone or your wallet sitting there on a towel, really obvious. But I, mean, I try to take as little as possible as I can. So at least it's mm -hmm. kind of, that's it's not, someone has to kind of just hope it's there or chance it's there if it is wrapped in something, but it's still not the best thing. And I, I mean, I know we're just joking about you sort of st stealing their money from the phones, but you know, for anyone who missed it, you know, Amelia did a fantastic interview with uh, one of our followers who had this his phone stolen, not at a beach, but um, out, you know, out and about. And the knock on from that, so if you haven't already watched or listened to that episode, it's only from a few weeks ago. So please do check that one out it's a really serious thing and you really need to take this so seriously. I think, you know, this inflatable bag you talked about, how much are they? I mean, I guess you get different sizes and. My boyfriend bought them. Were they, I think they might've been about 20 quid, which feels like a lot for like a little inflatable fluorescent plastic bag. Um, but I can let you know if anyone's well, interested. I think, do you know what, even 20 know. quid, because you think about what, your it's basically your own form of insurance isn't it mm. 20 quid protects all those things from potentially getting nicked or damaged um and it's not like a one-off thing you can use it as long as you know where it is next time you go on holiday and go to pack not if one lives on you know, near the beach like you do but that's uh i think money well spent so definitely worth looking to that i think better by that than just some nappies but there we go um another travel story last travel story for you here just an update on something that's been going on involving Hotels.com and Expedia. We reported earlier in the year on some changes to the loyalty schemes for both of those. Um, up until now, they've operated independently, even though they are both owned by the same company, by Expedia Group. There's also Verbo, VRBO, I never quite say how you're going to say it, which is like an Airbnb thing, also part of that group. And uh, the idea was they would bring it all together under something called One Key, and uh, which sounds like one key if you say it too quickly. So One Key. Um, and it would start rolling out in mid-July until mid-September here in the UK. Schemes come together. And essentially, like the, the headline here is, for those who weren't aware of it or aren't aware of it, uh, the rate you would get would be universal across all of those in terms of your reward rate, rate every time you booked a hotel. And I think it's around like 2%. The problem is, Hotels.com, as it currently stands, it's roughly 10% back. You book 10 nights and you get one free stay at a hotel for the average price of those different nights. So roughly 10%, uh, which is obviously a lot better. And I've seen uh, a big increase in the number of comments that you guys are leaving on our review of One Key on the website. 
um, in the last few days and weeks, which obviously is an indication that people are starting to have their accounts changed over. Mine's still the old system, but gradually it's been moved over. And people understandably are not happy. And that has been reflected as well in a story I saw this week, because apparently the figures show that around the world where this is kind of, uh, well, the UK and the US where it's already started, it's had quite a negative impact to the extent that the Expedia Group are going to pause and potentially not even do the rollout of this around the world if we're about the UK and the USA, because it's already happening. They can't sort of stop it and have this sort of different sort of things going on. So I uh, wanted to kind of give you a heads up. One, in case you weren't aware of it, that it is coming on. It's still going to be happening and it's already obviously started for some people in the UK. And I imagine over the next uh, four or five weeks, it'll be completely rolled out. Um, but two, maybe, maybe, maybe this means that uh, they might change their mind at some point. Uh, this was all reported over the Head for Points website, um, who do quite good stuff on kind of airline points and stuff. Um, but if we do spot any changes, they do announce any difference to it, we'll obviously let you know. Um, but yeah, kind of not particularly well thought out, this change. Um, and it's nice to see you making some changes and reacting to that. Just a bit of sad news that it's not necessarily going to come to us here in the UK. What a disappointing end to that little travel segment <laughs> today. Um, but to, to finish off with our stories, um, this is non-travel related. And I feel this has made me feel mixed feelings. So you may have seen it, but on this morning, Alice Beer, she's the consumer editor of the program. She was heavily criticised for her money tips. So she has this money segment and people were criticising her on Twitter. Sorry, X. Um, saying that they found the tips patronizing and condescending. Um, the segment seemed to be about how to save £1,500 in a year. And she came up with, well, she didn't come up, but she was talking about, um, you know, you can do like the, when you save 1p, like 1p on the first day, 2p on the, the second day, 3p, and you basically like save in 1p increments throughout the year and you could have £600 by the end of the year. She also was talking about, you know, giving up takeaway coffees or switching to a cheaper supermarket. And people were just not impressed at all. And I think this is interesting because, you know, we are here trying to share tips that people haven't heard of. You know, we're all about kind of, I guess, yeah, digging deep into topics or products and, you know, helping people make the most of their money, which she is too. And lots of other people are too. And I think the challenge is, especially with a massive audience like this morning, knowing what's obvious and what's not. And I think, you know, the years that I've been writing about personal finance, people, you know, people are engaged. People are much more engaged now than they were when I started 10 years ago. People are so into it. People are into all the hacks. People commit a lot more time to it than they did when I was in my 20s. Um, but when your audience is so broad and, yeah, how it might be useful for some people. And how, how do you know you're not engaging directly with the audience all the time? But, yeah, it kind of... Um, I don't know what the lesson is there. <laughs> the, the question, yeah, there's more of a quick, it's more of a question, I think, than than an answer. But yeah, I kind of, I felt a bit bad for her. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, obviously this, you know, say it was social media. So it was X, a few people got a bit kind of sarky about it. And then people, you know, we know the tabloids, they're always looking for uh, ways to kind of write those things up into another kind of article not necessarily because it's newsworthy just because they have a certain amount of things they have to push out and try and sort of get more traction themselves from social media and try and make a bit of a noise potentially out, out of nothing but I, I think it was interesting when you shared it with me I thought it was definitely one we should talk about because it is hard to sort of to sort of know what everyone's level is um, and you have got to kind of like not just us but I think all of you listening or watching this as well is just never quite assuming that everyone knows what what you know and I think that's what's what's quite important there um you know i just did an update video in the podcast this week about how to switch bank many 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 of you because our most popular content we do all the time know how to switch bank because when we do those offers and those deals you do them you jump in and you switch and it's your second third fourth fifth sixth switch but at the same time i'll get people saying this is my first time doing it i don't know how to do it what is this so there's always going to be different uh, levels of of knowledge and understanding and appetite and even some things which you might think are really really obvious uh, people might have no clue about so I definitely think it's worth you know telling people stuff and if they go yeah I already know that you go that's great you know and if someone tells you something that you already know go oh, thanks very much you know that's don't sort of like put them off telling you other stuff because they might know something 
you don't know. And it kind of also uh, feeds in a little bit to something we spoke about last week, this sort of campaign we're doing in August called Your Money, Your Voice. And what we're trying to do there is encourage you to talk about money experiences, good and bad. So I think uh, you know, if you have got something good or bad to say, let your that word of mouth telling your friends uh, about something. And if they then didn't do it, don't hold back thinking, oh, it's really obvious they might know it. Just sort of say, oh, do you know this? Or if you don't know, ask that question. Even if it feels like a stupid question, you think, oh God, this must be so obvious. Everyone knows about it. I don't want to ask. Ask that question. So yeah, I, I do feel sorry for for this morning doing that. But um, but at the same time, you know, you, you have to say, yeah, everyone's at a different level and it's important that everyone uh, finds a way to kind of improve their financial knowledge. And to be fair, if people want to, this morning, they're never going to go next level stuff. They're never going to do a lot of some of the things that we cover here. Uh, that's just not going to be in their remit. It'd be too, too much for them. Um, should we get on to deals of the week? Uh, yes. Move them over. This episode's a few to share with you. We'll try and race through them. Information about all of these over at becleveryourcash.com forward slash deals. So head over there and you'll be able to get uh, any links you need or any codes you need uh, or any just more information so you can take advantage of them. The first one I want to talk about is a savings deal. Now, obviously, you guys know, covered it already uh, on the site and the podcast and YouTube, that rates are starting to fall. The savings rates are, are dropping following that base rate cut. Um, but there is an offer right now which potentially, if you've got a fair amount to save, uh, could give you a really, really decent rate. So this is for new customers of a site called Raisin. It's called, called itself a, a savings marketplace. And this is basically uh, a site you go to and they have uh, dozens of different savings accounts from different providers. Some you've heard of, some you won't have heard of. Some of them exclusive rates just for Raisin. Some of them the same rate you'll get elsewhere. But if you are a brand new Raisin customer and you open up an account with them and you save £10,000, okay, so it's a lot of money, you save £10,000 for six months, you can't access that money before six months, they'll give you a £100 bonus on top. Now, the rates at the time of recording this, things are still changing all the time. But at the moment, if you lock that money away for a year, uh, the top one is 5.16%. That £100 is the equivalent of a 0.5 uh, bonus. So uh, give you an equivalent rate of 5.66% on 10 grand for a year. Obviously, if you save more than 10 grand, it will be a, a lower equivalent uh, rate. If you want to lock it away just for the six months, just for the length of this promotion, the top rate there is 5.06%, and that's the equivalent of a 1% increase. So 6.06%, although of course that is on AER, uh, and we're talking about just for six months rather, rather than a year. But certainly if you're new to Razor, this £100 bonus is one of the best ones they've done. There's often a 50 or 20 quid one that's running, but 100 quid, really good one, and a good time as well when we know rates are falling. This might be your last chance to lock in at something that's uh, a little bit healthier. Uh, be clever with your cash.com forward slash savings will give you all the different rates, Raisin and elsewhere, and also a link for that code that you need. You need to follow a special link and enter a code in order to get that price. Uh, next one I want to talk about involves Amazon. Um, I'm not the biggest Amazon fan, as I'm sure regular sort of followers will know, but this is potentially not a bad promo. Uh, you have to go to co op. Not all co ops are taking part, just the way it's kind of set up. Uh, it's in the name, cooperative. Some of them are slightly separate, but you can. Uh, we've got a link on the site for you to find stores that are taking part. You go in and they've got a special meal deal. Two pizzas and a tub of Ben and Jerry's for five pounds, which I think is not too bad at all, just doing that. But when you do that, you can then upload your receipt within seven days and you will get a £4.99 Amazon voucher sent through. Now this voucher technically is only able to be used for an Amazon Prime video rental. Uh, so if there's something you want to watch, that's great. It seems in practice, it's just being added to your Amazon account for you to use however you want. But this deal, it launched like just over a week ago, just too late for us to include in last week's show. Uh, it has been really, really popular on social media and lots of people may be trying to game it. So there is a chance that you might be tied, they might have changed how it works and you'd be tied to using it on Prime Video. But that's no bad thing. I think you know, you've got a video, Two pizzas and ice cream for five is pretty good. Or potentially you can spend that $4.99 on anything you want on Amazon. So uh, again, more details on that over on the site. Uh, and a couple of quick streaming ones for you. Uh, Spotify, if you cancelled Spotify Premium more than 30 days ago, uh, log into your account because you might have a special offer three months for the price of one. So three months for $11.99. Uh, if you've never had Spotify Premium before, 
to coincide with this is also for first timers, three months free. So they are some of the best offers out there for you to save on Spotify. And uh, we spoke last week about football season coming back. I spoke about Now TV. If you've had Sky Sports on Now TV in the past, or potentially just had Now TV in the past, uh, make sure you do have a look at your emails for a special deal that ends on Monday, this coming Monday. It's $19.99 a month for 12 months, which is one of the cheapest prices you can see for the Sky Sports channels. Although the price stays for 12 months, you aren't locked in for 12 months. You can cancel it earlier if you wish. Although, of course, if you do that and then sign up again, you won't get the lower price. But uh, that, if you want to watch the Premier League kicking off this weekend, that's going to be one of the cheapest ways to do it. Brilliant. Thanks for those. Um, cinema lovers, you can get 40% off cinema tickets at cinemas like View, Odeon, Showcase and others with Cinema Society via Lidl sort of a bit of a way to go but yeah basically if you've got the Lidl Plus app go to the partner offers in the app and click through to register for Cinema Society. Now this deal is available until the 5th of October but once you've signed up you should be able to keep your membership beyond that. Next one if you're a fan of Winter Wonderland so this is the Christmas Fair in Hyde Park in London I can't believe we're talking about Christmas deals already. (laughs) Um, you can currently get free off-peak tickets. So the entry to Winter Wonderland usually costs between £5 and £7.50. Years ago, I remember it used to be free, but not anymore. Um, But you can book free morning slots in November, December and January and essentially go in the morning and stay as long as you like. I think this deal is going to be quite popular. So yeah, if you're interested, if you love pootling around the Christmas fair, have a look it's all the details are on the website um because yeah they could get snatched up quite quickly um next john lewis shoppers if you so john lewis the my john lewis membership scheme often offers pretty decent deals and discounts to customers but it seems to depend on who the customer is so i'm telling you check check your account now and see what's there because Nikki, one of our writers, got 20% off school shoes and two free hot drinks. And you, Andy, got some pretty decent offers as well. So £15 off fragrance and free Jude's ice cream. I'd love to know how it's, how it's, yeah, how it's offering these to specific customers. Yeah, it's really random there, isn't it? I mean, I've kind of not bought any fragrances or been to their cafes, but you know, why not? But it knows what you want. <laughs> yes. I want to smell nice while eating cold dairy. There we go. Indeed. Um, and lastly, Lush. So the kind of natural, the natural kind of cosmetics company that you see on the high street, where you can smell it before you can see it. Mm. Um, it's offering a three pound coupon with its new loyalty app. If you sign into the latest version before the 8th of October, and this is for new customers and existing customers. Um, once you activate it, it lasts for three months and you can then use it in store or on purchases via the app. Lovely. Thanks, Amelia. And thank you, everyone, for watching this on YouTube or listening to this on the podcast app, however it is you uh, do follow us here. Uh, don't forget, if you want to read about any of the stories that Amelia and I have discussed, we have links to those and more over at becleverwithyourcash.com, or you can find that via the show notes in, the, in YouTube or the podcasting app, however it is you are listening to us. And we'll be back with another show on Tuesday. So see you all then. Cheers, everyone.